حضرت مارو مارو یا ما ما فرق جه من دام خطا کم نیم نشی دخوس نکوار روغلا که خدایی کی نیم نشی بنور سوک کلا وکلا و سویشتم و ویشتم که خدایی کی کویتام شکش تو پاس وارک چه دادی که اکمات خبارش و ورس خبارش که خدایی کی کوایه دکندور نه دپانشیر نه دکارگی نه دوستم کویی تو دکندار نه دار سروره سوار لاس پرکی پی میخ سروره سوار لاس پرکی چی پی میخ نروره که خدایی کی بنور سروک کلا وکلا دیار لاش پی جانگم سروک دویر کوایش نروگار اخلاق دویر که خدایی کی میک کمک ورد روغه که خدایی کی بنور پوک کلا پوک کلا ده خالقی ده پرچمی ده شورایی کوام بر تا و پاس و آگاه ده خوش بازورم نه است. درای سوام ملا شورایون داخلی اسکار متنی اسکار ده کارمل اسکار دام مردول کلا. درای سوام ملا دوی مردول کلا که خدایی کی شپک سوام ملا پلاکات ورسه. For seven years now, Commander Khatak has been fighting the Soviet and Kabul government forces. He swears he will not lay down his arms until the communists surrender. Moscow has stated it will not withdraw some 140,000 troops from Afghan soil until the Mujahideen surrender. Meanwhile, as the Afghan war steadily intensifies, Soviet might is slowly but surely pounding much of rural Afghanistan into rubble. seven years, mounting pressure on the defiant countryside has forced up to five million people, or one-third of the pre-war population, to pack what belongings they can carry and make the journey to the security of refugee camps in neighboring Pakistan and Iran. of civilians continues, the same mountain trails across Afghanistan's rugged borders have carried a very different traffic moving in the opposite direction. Resistance convoys carrying arms and ammunition make their way from staging points on the border to fuel the war in provinces the length and breadth of the country.
Soviet efforts to seal the borderline have made an already arduous journey even more difficult. Mountain passes between Afghanistan and Pakistan have been seeded with mines, and over the past two years, experienced Soviet commandos have staged ambushes along the trails used by the resistance. In addition, the depopulation of the countryside has meant that food for both men and animals has become scarce. Probably the longest and most treacherous trail of all is that across the towering ranges of the Hindu Kush. Setting out from sanctuaries in northern Pakistan, the Mujahideen cross a series of passes at around 16,000 feet and may take up to three weeks to reach the Panjshir Valley, gateway to northern Afghanistan. For the first half of the journey, the sheer difficulty of the terrain and shortage of food poses far greater problems than the enemy. Burdened with ammunition, mines, mortars and machine guns, many of the horses that set out never reached their destination. Broken legs and sheer exhaustion exact a steady toll. As the convoy nears the Panjshir Valley, the threat of airstrikes by Soviet jets based only minutes flying time away near the capital, Kabul, becomes ever more real. To avoid being caught on exposed mountain passes, the Mujahideen are forced to move under cover of darkness. journey is the Panjshir, a narrow 75 mile long valley strategically situated close to both Kabul and the main highway north to the Soviet Union. Resistance in the Panjshir has emerged as perhaps the most effective in the country. In large measure, this has been due to the valley's commander, Ahmad Shah Massoud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since the Soviet invasion of Christmas 1979, Massoud, a 33-year-old former engineering student, has established himself as one of the most popular guerrilla chiefs in Afghanistan, a figure whose reputation has spread far beyond the valley itself. Massoud's fears proved to be well-founded. In 1978, pro-Soviet army officers staged a bloody coup in which President Daoud was killed. The new Marxist regime embarked on a program of force-fed reform that triggered widespread revolt in the conservative and deeply religious countryside. In 1979, the Soviet Union intervened and Soviet troops crossed the border. But it was too late to prevent a popular resistance from becoming a full-blown war of national liberation. Soviet 
مبارزه خود شدید تر بسازیم و فعالیت خود از دروساتون تر بسازیم تا خدا بخواه که افغانستان دوباره آزاد بسازیم او رقم هم بدرد نمیخوری نه نه Despite his relative youth, Masood's authority in the Panjshir stands unchallenged. At the same time, his relationship with both his men and the people of the valley has remained informal, almost casual. سر میکنم پومی باز امور بخش میده خب تا میکنم میکنم استاد میباشد سه چه رنگ میده در آکه هم و در کتن هم آلی ما چه قبطه میشم شما بخش یکی نیکاره شما بخش یکی نیکاره یک چه رنگ زیبا بتنید نیکاره سه سابول فکر نگشتن نه نه ما تو سوارش نشه هم بولو میخواست تو بخش بید کلا میتری کده تو سوارش کرده سوارش بالاش The organization that Masood has built up in the valley is somewhere in the region of 7,000 men, a far larger force than the typical Afghan resistance commander might wield. <laughs> a senior assistant to Masood offered reasons for the success of the Panjshir resistance. First of all, of course, help of God. Secondly, as I see it, which differs from other parts of Afghanistan, is an effective guerrilla order. Secondly, unity inside the valley, right. amongst all the bases mm -hmm. in relation to commander himself. Thirdly, which is more important, is an effective and efficient leadership, right. which has got very good plans in mind on paper and practice. How much of this is a question of Panjshir and how much Masood the man? Both Panjshir and Masood. Leadership is very important in a guerrilla warfare. He has become and proved to be a charismatic guerrilla leader of Afghans inside Afghanistan. Masood has organized a small number of Panjshiri guerrillas, probably around 500, into elite mobile companies. Better trained and better armed than their village-based comrades, these units travel beyond the valley, striking at Soviet bases and lines of communication. Repeatedly hit by Panjshiri guerrillas has been the Salang Highway, a vital communications link between the capital, Kabul, and the Soviet Union. But if the Panjshiri guerrillas have succeeded in hurting the Russians and the Moscow-backed regime in Kabul, there has been a heavy price to be paid. Soviet offensives against the valley have increased in intensity and destructiveness, laying waste the lower reaches of the main valley. And as so often in the Afghan war, it has been the civilians who have suffered first, and suffered most. Panjshir was once home to some 90,000 people. Now it is all but deserted. 
But the Mujahideen stayed, hiding in the mountains and side valleys, an existence not too difficult for a people already inured to hardship. <laughs> And in the high villages above the valley, the guerrillas maintained agricultural production using methods that had changed little in centuries. In the Panjshir, as elsewhere in Afghanistan, Islam has played a basic role as a 